to be truthful to ourselves and to the facts. It is important for us to be objective and show sensitivity to the plight of the ordinary Guinean. For us in the NDC, our position on this matter is simple. And our position is basically that not only is the recently announced increment in electricity and water tariffs obnoxious, but it is totally unjustifiable and untenable, number one. Number two, as has already been elaborated by justice, it amounts to a monumental betrayal of the trust of Ghanaians. And number three, it underscores the insensitivity of the Akufuado government. And I will explain that for our viewers and listeners to appreciate our position on this matter. As for the increment being a monumental betrayal of the trust of Ghanaians, I need not belabor the point because I think justice did, you know, uh, justice to the issues. Um, it is clear what the new patriotic party promised in the run-up to the 2016 elections. They promised lower utility tariffs. They decried and bemoaned what they then described as killer electricity tariffs. The then opposition leader Nanado Danko Kufuado, all recall, retorted at the time that so bad was the situation that cost of electricity was even higher at the time than rent, cost of rent. They promised as better, promised to reduce the cost of electricity. What they have done, which is the subject of this discussion, is not in consonance with that promise. Doc, you promised lower utility tariffs. And that is what you must deliver. I will explain to you and submit very forcefully that what you have delivered is rather higher utility tariffs and not lower utility tariffs. And that is a fact. And so that, that is disappointing for the vast majority of Guineans. Promise us better. You come into office, you worsen the situation. And when we talk, you say, we are talking too much. Doc said, they say, enough of the talk. We are talking too much. As politicians, what we tell the electorates on the basis of which we are elected must matter. If we don't take care, Senna, politicians will soon become endangered species in this country. Because when the NPP was in opposition, we heard their rhetorics, we heard their utopian mouth-watering promises. And today they are doing the very opposite of what they promised. And so that is the monumental betrayal of trust I spoke of. Now to why we say this increment underscores the insensitivity of the Akufuado government. You see, now, we are not living in ordinary times. Though. We are living in very difficult times. The Ghanaian people are living within a certain economic climate, affected by myriads of factors, cost of fuel, taxes, the exchange rate depreciation, and so on. And all these factors have worsened over the last two and a half years and have conspired to make life unbearable for majority of Ghanaians. Today, as we speak, a gallon of fuel which used to go for 14 Ghana cities as of December 2016, when we went to the polls, is now going for 24 Ghana cities. Drivers are complaining. The mates, the trotro mates are complaining. Ghanaians are complaining. The increment in the cost of fuel alone has had serious, severe ripple effects on almost everything in this country. Only yesterday, as part of sensitization, uh, sensitization campaign towards the Kumia Preko demonstration slated for the 9th of July 2019, we went to Abu Sulkai. We went there to hear the cry and the complaints of the spare parts dealers there. 
the capital and profit margins of businessmen, importers, spare parts dealers, have been eroded as a result of the free fall of the Ghana city. They are suffocating under the excruciating economic conditions we find ourselves. Businesses are collapsing. Thousands of jobs are being lost on a daily basis. Only last week, over 2,000 people were dismissed by the Consolidated Bank. Taxes have gone up. Today we are talking about the luxury vehicle tax. We are talking about a 5% increment in VAT through the back door. We are talking about the reintroduction of the stabilization levy on the cost of fuel. So we are not living in ordinary times. And what this increment will do is that it will worsen the already bad economic situation we find ourselves in. It will increase the already high cost of living. If you were paying 100 Ghana CDs for electricity every month, be prepared to be, to be paying around 110, 120 Ghana CDs per month now. You'll be paying more for water now. So this increment, no doubt, will impose more economic hardship, more economic burden on the already impoverished Guinea. And that is why we in the NDC cannot accept this, because the times we are living in and the current economic environment Guineans find themselves in does not justify this increment. The, NH, the NHI, as we speak now, is collapsing. I went to Malata Market only this week, and I've been to a couple of shops to ascertain prices of commodities on the market. And, and so now, I was shocked at the figures I saw. There, there's been steep increments in the prices of almost every commodity on the market. Check iron rods, for example. If you look at iron rods, the 12 mm you know, iron rods, one ton. As of December 2016, was going for 2,600. As we speak now, it is going for 3,200 cities. Binding wire, one quail of binding wire, which used to go for 35 Ghana cities, is now going for 50 Ghana cities. Gas and cement, as of December 2016, was going for around 28 Ghana cities per bag. Gas 26, 27. Now, it is 34, as some places, 35 Ghana cities. Tomatoes, the local ones, small, a small box of, you know, uh, uh, tomatoes. The box, as of December 2016, was going for 150 Ghana cities. Today, at Malata Market, and you can check this for yourself, it has moved from 150 Ghana cities to 700 Ghana cities, just tomatoes. Time will not allow me to go through, you know, all the items I have here. But that is the dire economic stress we find ourselves in. So when government communicators appear on platforms like this, the least they can do is to show some sensitivity. When we are complaining about the, the, the times we are in, the hardship we are reeling under, and you tell us we are talking too much, like doctor just said, you are insulting our sensibilities. That is what you are doing. Now, to why we say, let me go to why we are saying that this whole increment is unjustifiable, it is untenable and unacceptable. And explain to you why the arguments being abused by our brother from the MPP here are completely untenable. In 2018, let me even use the 2019 fiscal year, the Ministry of Finance went to Parliament proposed to the August House of Parliament to discount $181 million worth of gas produced by the Ghana Gas Company as non-government revenue. Let me explain that. We produce gas as a country. You know that currently most of our power plants run on both fuel and gas. And because gas is cheaper and now we have you know, access to gas, as a result of the huge investments the Mahama administration made in that sector, now we have gas, and so most of our power plants are running on gas. These power producers are supposed to pay for the gas they are supplied with by the Ghana Gas Company. But in 2019, 
The Ministry of Finance went to Parliament and said, because of the challenges they are going through, Ghana Gas will give these power producers gas amounting to $181 million, equivalent to 927 million Ghana cities for free. So more or less, government, and for that matter, Ghanaians, were subsidizing or have been subsidizing fuel in the form of gas being used by these power producers. Also in this same year, 2019, if you look at the work plan of the GMPC, they went to Parliament and Parliament gave approval for GMPC to borrow $250 million, equivalent to 1.3 billion Ghana cities, to pay for the ENI gas and also to buy fuel for car power. And that loan, $250 million, will be paid from our oil royalties. So the Ghanaian people are paying for that. So in effect, what the Ghanaian people have done this year is that we have used a hopping 2.2 billion Ghana cities, which could have been used to build schools, to build roads, to build hospitals, to subsidize the cost of generation, to subsidize the cost of production of power, so that state-owned enterprises and power producers can break even. That is a subsidy we have provided for the power sector. What does that mean? That means that cost of generation is now cheaper. Cost of generation has not come down. And that must translate in the tariffs we pay. So rather than increase electricity tariffs, if this government was honest, it should rather be reducing electricity tariffs. But they have kept this information from the Ghanaian people. How many people know that this year alone, over 2.2 billion Ghana cities belonging to the taxpayer has been used to subsidize the cost of generation of electricity? So that is why we are saying that this increment is unjustifiable. You cannot be increasing electricity when we have used about 2.2 billion of taxpayers' money to subsidize the cost of generation. And then they say, oh, we need to increase it because of the exchange rate depreciation. Because we are so bad in managing, we've been so bad in managing the city. And that has affected state-owned enterprise and power players in the energy sector, that we need to increase it. That is what they are telling us. Senator, whose responsibility? Who has the responsibility? In fact, the sole responsibility to manage the city and manage the economy. Is it not government? When Doc and his people were in opposition, didn't you tell Ghanaians that you were better managers of the economy? Have you forgotten about the economic lectures you organized, addressed by your then running mate, now Vice President, Dr. Baumia? You told us that you were going to stabilize the city. Now, we have seen, or we are seeing continuous depreciation of the Ghana city. If you look at the last fiscal year, which the PRC took, into consideration in arriving at these tariffs, they use an average CD to dollar rate of five CDs for tapers worth. That is why Ghanaians are having to pay or will be paying for these new increments effective first July. So in effect, what you are doing is that you are punishing the ordinary Ghanaian with higher utility tariffs for your incompetence. You are punishing us for your incompetence. If the dollar was still four cities 20 pesos we will not be paying this 11.7 percent increment that is the point i'm making when you ask the question at the press conference were you not told that they are increasing this uh, uh, utility tariffs because of the depreciation of the city was that not the answer you were giving check the statement from prc that is the fact but if you can allow me to finish you are saying they were wrong okay so that is why we are assessing it we are saying that that reason is untenable because you have the sole responsibility of managing the city and stabilizing it. You told us in 2017, as part of your so-called 101 achievements, that you had arrested the dollar and given the keys to the IGP. All that have turned out to be lies. And today you are punishing us with higher electricity tariffs because of your failure to manage the economy and stabilize the city. And when we talk...
14%. You say we are talking too much. Then there are some who say, oh, we have not re uh, increased electricity tariffs. The mathematics doesn't support that. Because in 2016, 2017, we reduced it by 15% to 30%. So if we increase it by 11.7%, it is still a reduction. That is the argument he's making. I think the reduction was even March 20. That is what you're saying, March 2018. Over a period. You see, Over a period. You see, and, and, that, and that, 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 you, see, you, cannot, you, you cannot build something on nothing. That argument is premised on lies, and I will explain that to you. You see, here, this is a large and a large. The yeah. mother of all talk shows. Right. And we need to be factual. The 15% to 30% reduction in electricity that was announced early 2019, Senator, I submit to you and your listeners and viewers, was fraudulent and never took effect. Look, if you look at the presentation, a presentation that the uh, ECG made to the Parliamentary Committee on Mines and Energy late 2018, and you can speak to our ranking member, Honorable Adams Mutawakilu, on this. You can speak to the committee. The proceedings are there. If you look at the reductions which were announced, we were supposed to be charged, the ECG was supposed to charge us what is called composite bulk generation tariff of 35 pesos per kilowatt hour of energy. 35 pesos. That is how much we were supposed to pay for the reductions. reductions. Okay. But when the ECG submitted the, the, what is called RECONA, which details the various consumption bands of electricity and how much each pays at every given time, they were charging the Guinean 53 pesos per kilowatt hour. So the announced reduction was not being enforced by the ECG. And this was raised at the committee level. In fact, Honorable John Jennifer raised it in the media. I am challenging you, let the ECG publish the record that they used for 2018. And let's see whether we were charged 35 pesos per kilowatt hour. We were charged 53 pesos. I used to buy 500 Ghana cities of power every month. And it was taking me, you know, about four weeks. At the time they said they had reduced electricity. I buy 600 Ghana and two weeks it is finished. Speak to other people. I'm sure even around this table, there are people with such experiences. We were actually paying more. So the reductions you announced only existed on paper. You, you boasted about reducing electricity for hairdressers, beauticians. Some will pay 17%, uh, 20%, uh, 20 How did you assess that? How were you able? How was it even implemented? Tell me one hairdresser in this country who benefited from that reduction you, you are speaking of how, because how how will you know that i'm a hairdresser are they giving special cars oh, they, they didn't put any measure in place to enforce that and today you are sitting here telling us that oh we reduce it by 15 to 30 percent so 11.7 percent is still low it is it is a lie that 15 to 30 percent reduction never took effect and i've given facts you know to to to, to buttress that point then they say, oh, we need to increase it for, to sustain state-owned enterprises in the power sector for financial viability. That is one argument they are give, uh, me, they've been making as justification for this increment. That, again, is untenable. Financial viability? Look, the Mahama administration, before it left office, introduced the energy sector levies at ESLA. I missed vehement opposition from the then opposition now government the NTP. they opposed it they described it as nuisance tax they said we're wicked they promised to scrap it if elected today again they failed to keep to their promise of scrapping that tax and as a result of that tax which they opposed vehemently they are raking in a total of 3 billion Ghana cities, averagely, every year. And they've been making 3 billion Ghana cities from ESLA since 2017. The purpose of ESLA is to clear energy sector legacy debts. So now you understand. So if you use 3 billion Ghana cities every year for its intended purpose, of paying legacy debts and all that, it will at least improve the financial books of our state-owned enterprises. 
Let us ask our brothers in the MPP and government what they have been using that money for and whether they can account for it. We know that in 2017, about 600 million of that money was used in paying pensions.